If you want to increase the sales of your products and services, one of the best things you can do to add to your store is add an affiliate program to it. This is where you now have other people partnering together with you to sell your products and services by referring them to you in exchange for them. They're going to get a piece of the action, a commission fee. And so I'm going to show you how to set this up on your WordPress website in this video. I'm going to actually give you two options. One is going to be a free plugin and the other one is going to be a paid plugin. And I use one of these plugins in my business. So if that interests you, stick around. If you're new to the channel, Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button and click on that notification bell if you want to be notified when I've uploaded a new video. So let's just go ahead and jump on into this one. Now this video goes with a series of videos that I've been releasing that kind of go with this video here. This is a thumbnail, you might see it. I might change it actually. And it's an hour and a half long tutorial on how to add funnels to your website to sell your products and services with sales funnels. I'll link to this in the video description box down below. We're going to actually pick up where I left off in this video with the site that has the e-commerce platform and everything installed in it. But I'll talk you through it along the way. If you haven't seen this, you're going to be able to use this video though about the affiliate management program. However, watching this video is definitely not a requirement for this video to get a lot out of it. So there's other tutorial blocks that are coming that go along with that video. Uh, one's going to be on adding drop shipping to your e-commerce store and your sales funnels. Another one is print on demand to your sales funnels, adding online courses and membership programs. And of course, this video adding an affiliate management program to your web store. So here we go. An affiliate program is pretty much just a referral pr program. Uh, there's referral pr programs have been around <laughs> since the dawn of time. So it's really nothing new, but it's d done a little bit differently digitally. And we're going to go over that. So you can choose to pay either a fixed amount when a uh, pr one of your products is sold through a referral or a percentage of the sale. You mostly see a percentage of the sale. And the way it happens is with tracking links. So someone signs up to be one of your affiliates and they're going to get a unique link to your website. And if they put that link on say a blog post on their website, or they refer that link to someone, they click on it and then they go to your website. That's how everything's tracked is through these unique links. You also can have the ability to create unique coupons for your affiliate affiliates and they can share that with their audience to give a discount to their audience. But when their audience uses that coupon, those sales will automatically be linked up in the affiliate program or the referral program to that particular affiliate. So these are two ways that the sales actually get tracked. Now you get to choose a cookie policy. So here's an example of a 30 day cookie policy. What that means is if you click on my affiliate link, what happens is your browser, there's going to be a cookie, what's called a browser cookie is going to be placed on that computer. And so from that moment to 30 days in the future, if that person makes a purchase, it will be attributed to my affiliate link. So that's a 30 day cookie policy. You can have a 60 day or a 90 day cookie policy. Uh, it's up to you how you want that cookie policy to be uh, pretty standard would be 60 to 90 days. Sometimes I've seen them go longer and there's also some Something called a click policy, which means first click or last click. So what that means is if, if I have an affiliate link and you click on that affiliate link and that's the first click, but then a week later you click on someone else's affiliate link who actually gets attributed that sell. Was it the first link, which would have been me or would it be the last click? So there's that click policy, which is known as first click or last click. All right. So there's a couple things you want to be weary of though, having an affiliate program. There's a lot of spammers 
and scammers out there. And what they are doing is they're just trying to spam and scam with your link. Now, when I show you some of the uh, websites and their policies, you're gonna start to understand what some of those spams and scams are. You also have coupon sites. These are affiliates that bring zero value to your product. They just take a coupon code they get from you and whether it's a they have a real one or a fake one, they're just trying to rank their website when someone searches product name coupon, product name discount. And those are the types of affiliates you definitely don't want because they bring zero value to you and your business. Another type of affiliate that you don't want is rebate affiliates. And what they're doing is if you give a 50% affiliate commission, which is kind of on the high side, that should only be for your top performing affiliates, but say you give 50%, they'll put an article on their website saying, hey, if you click on this link, I'm gonna get 50% and I'm gonna give you half of that and we'll split it 50-50. So you don't want affiliates like this because then again, it's that spammer and scammer, they're not providing any value whatsoever. And then there's, and this isn't actually spam or scam, uh, there's people that want to earn a referral on their own purchase. It's up to you if you want to allow this or not. I recommend not allowing this and there's a really simple way around it and that is a minimum payment policy. So what that means is you can have a policy where you will pay out affiliate commissions when they reach a certain threshold. For example, $200. That's probably going to eliminate some of this referrals on your own purchase type of situations and some of these here. So those are some things that you can do uh, in there. So. There's a couple affiliate plug plugins available and here's what they do. They're going to create affiliate pages. So when we add it and install it and activate it, it's going to add an affiliate application page. That's where someone will apply to be an affiliate and then you can choose to auto approve or manual approve. I suggest manually approving and there'll also be an affiliate area. So they'll log in and there'll be an area where they could see how many people have clicked on their link. They can actually get their link and they can see what commissions are coming and going and payments. Uh, and then what you do is you manually approve those affiliates so you can see how people plan or what they tell you anyhow, how they plan on promoting your products and services. Uh, and then what you do is you make, after affiliates are making commissions, you make manual or a mass payment, how you decide. So usually there might be a, like a 90 day waiting period or a 60 day waiting period because you want any refund period or chargeback period that you might get as someone that's selling anything. You want that to expire because you obviously don't want to pay affiliate commissions on products that end up getting returned. So you can have a policy on when you're going to pay the affiliates and then you pretty much do it manual. Some of the affiliate plugins will allow you to make an automated mass payment. I suggest if it's not a massive affiliate program, you should definitely try manually paying for a while just to make sure you have a grasp of everything that's going on. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other things that you're going to want to add that might not be added by the affiliate plugin that you're going to use. Okay, so we're going to look at a couple examples. So here is Elementor's website. If you don't have Elementor Page Builder, it's fantastic. I uh, use it. And so you, anyone can go to this site. It's a link in the footer of their website. And so what I like about this is going to give you an idea of maybe how you should structure the page on your website where you talk about your affiliate program. So you obviously want to encourage people to want to be an affiliate and you do that by genuinely having a good quality product. And so they talk about that and they also talk about how much you earn per sale. So with, uh, with Elementor, it's 50% and uh, they are talking about the resources they have. They're having uh, testimonials here from their affiliates that have done well. And right here is a really interesting part to this page that I think 
everyone should kind of emulate that's going to have an affiliate program. They tell you how to do it and how not to do it. So this is going to give you an idea of those scammers and spammers and what they're doing. So right here, they're saying promote it on social media, uh, write blog posts about it, make videos about it, uh, use their logo and banners on your website and email about Elementor when they release new features and stuff like that. Here's what you can't do, okay? You cannot use the affiliate link on coupon or deal sites. So I talked about the coupon sites. Uh, don't, here's another one. Don't false advertise Elementor in any manner. Now this one right here also ties into the last bullet item. Okay, don't change our logos and banners. Don't use your affiliate link for your own purchases. So they specifically state that you can't do that. And lastly, right here, and this is what you see a lot, don't offer unofficial discounts and coupon codes. So unofficial would mean just fake. And so you see this a lot. If you type any type of business coupon, you're gonna see that listed in multiple coupon websites, whether there's a valid coupon or not, and they mislead you into thinking that there is a discount or there is a coupon, you click on a link. And those are really those scammers and spammers that I was talking about. Now, another thing you're gonna want, and then it continues going on here, uh, some questions, frequently asked questions, and some more testimonials and stuff like that. Uh, anyways, uh, down here is something that you're gonna want to do is have some form of a trademark policy. So what that means is, well, first of all, you, you might wanna consider having a trademark if you don't. Then you also want to state, even if you don't have a trademark, you can state a trademark policy. And what you're trying to prevent is people misrepresenting their website as yours. So for example, with Elementor, uh, they don't want people, and you don't want people to do this, go out and register a domain name for a product, they don't want affiliates registering uh, getelementor.com or elementordiscount.com, elementorcoupons.com, anything with your trademark phrase in it because what will happen is it's gonna mislead people and it will be very misleading. So you want to not have your affiliates go out and register domain names with your trademark or your brand's name in it. The next suggestion I want to uh, give to you uh, that you're not gonna get from one of these affiliate management plugins is to create a brand asset page. So we're on the Cardflow's website here and you can see we have a brand asset page where we're basically saying, here's the logo that we want you to use in blog posts and any type of media. This is exactly how we want it used. Here's some banners and we make it available on the front end. So if you scroll down, there's a brand asset link right there. You're gonna want to put that on your website. Now, some of these affiliate plugins, what they're gonna do is they're gonna allow you to have it available to affiliates when they log in. But I think it's better to just have it linked in the footer of your website because there's gonna be other media that need access to it anyway, you might as well just have it right there. Okay, let's get to talking about the two plugins. Uh, one of them is WP Affiliate Manager. This is free and it's in the WordPress plugin repository. The other one is Affiliate WP, which is paid only and it's really what all the pros are using, including me. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So there's Affiliate Manager. It's gonna be free, it's in the WordPress repository. You can go to Plugins, Add New, do a search for Affiliate Manager, pop it right in. Okay, um, actually, I should have revised this. It's not so sneaky. I didn't realize on their website they had this Add-ons tab right here. I was trying to figure out how they're actually making money from this. Um, they have free add-ons, uh, but then they do list the premium add-ons right here. And it's basically integrations with different other plugins. Now, if you were going to only do something free, this is pretty much your only option and it's probably gonna be your best option. But if you're ever going to 
pay for an affiliate management plugin, by far Affiliate WP is a million times better. So they have paid extensions. They're not sneaky about it. I did kind of feel that way, but then I realized on their website, they did have it right there. It's just not as obvious. Okay, now the problem with this plugin though, is it kind of looks dated. It works, but it looks dated. And you're gonna see that when I install it here in a moment. Uh, but uh, a good thing is Affiliate WP has a way to convert from Affiliate Manager to Affiliate WP. So if you're just getting started out and you're on a budget and you don't have the resources to pay for an Affiliate Management plugin, you can start with Affiliate manage, uh, Manager and then when your needs change, you can go ahead and switch to Affiliate WP. And so next we're gonna take a look at Affiliate WP. It's gonna be $99 for one site. Let me just show you right here. Uh, they actually have multiple plans, right? We at Cartflows, we're using this $99 plan. This is the plan that I use right here. I do not have any need for this professional version. And the ultimate version is basically a lifetime license of the professional version right here. However, for me, I'm just using the $99 per year plan because these uh, premium pro add-ons that are included in this professional, I just have no need for them. The, the This plan right here with the official add-ons is all that I need. And so you could go here and take a look at the add-ons and the free add-ons that come with, well not free, you're paying for them <laughs> in the $99 plan, uh, they're plenty fine. And so these are gonna basically add additional features to Affiliate WP. Affiliate WP is more modular and you kind of got that uh, impression from Affiliate Manager. It's a modular solution where you can just add what you particularly need. A really nice thing about Affiliate WP is the integrations. So if I went right here to integrations, we're gonna integrate this with WooCommerce and it happens to be the, the first one there, but it's also gonna integrate with easy digital downloads, uh, membership plugins, the different uh, Stripe and PayPal for paying out. Uh, there's a form plugins if you wanted to ex expand the affiliate application form. And it's gonna work with these learning management systems. It pretty much is gonna work with anything that you're gonna really wanna be using on your website. It's gonna have an integration for. So an example is right here, it comes with this Lifter LMS integration. But if you're using Affiliate Manager and later you want to integrate it with Lifter LMS, well, you get it free with Affiliate WP, but for here, you have to pay for it. So uh, right here, if I clicked on it, you can see it's not like terribly expensive, uh, but it's 30 bucks. Uh, and then all of these things, if you need more than one, it's really going to start adding up. It uh, looks like uh, most of them are about 30 bucks, which is not bad. Uh, let's see right here. Uh, the WooCommerce one might be a little bit more. That's 60 bucks. So you see how the price can get really expensive in Affiliate WP. But like I said, I'm sorry, in uh, Affiliate Manager, like I said, in Affiliate WP, you can uh, migrate across. So let's go over this a little bit more, $99 for one site. There's many integrations and it's really what the pros use. I, I, I guess we can consider me a pro. It's what I use and all the affiliate programs that I'm a part of pretty much are using this. Okay, and probably the reason why is it's well supported. It's better sometimes to just have a paid product where there's a support desk, someone's obligated to help you out whenever you run into a problem. So let's uh, quit talking. Let's go ahead and, and install some of these tools. Okay, so here is that sales funnel website that I was talking about. And uh, there's a sales funnel on the main site and we're selling a few products. We're using WooCommerce for the checkout. You can see we have some products right here. So I'm gonna go to plugins, add new, and we'll first do the affiliate manager. Uh, that it's actually in the repo. So right here, just type affiliate manager. And here it is, you can see it's on over 10,000 websites. I'll click on install now. And also you could see that it was last updated two weeks ago for me recording this video, which means they're on top of keeping it updated and integrated. Okay, so now when we activate it, it's going to go ahead and add an affiliate tab right here. And we're gonna see affiliate WP adds theirs to the bottom. So it's gonna be right here, but first let's 
go to pages and you can see, I should have showed you this. These, before I installed it, I had these four pages, my WooCommerce pages only, the cart, checkout, my account and shop. It added these four pages right here. It added the affiliates, the affiliate login, the register and terms and conditions. So I'll have to actually make sure I delete those uh, when I get rid of this plugin. So you can see right here, uh, when you first click into it, you're gonna see a list of affiliates. These are people that are your active affiliates. And then right here, you can manually add someone as an affiliate. That happens a lot to me. Uh, I'll get reached out to and I'll say, can you create me an affiliate account? Uh, my creatives, this is where you're gonna basically create those brand assets. However, I think it's better to just have a brand asset page if you ask me. They have a PayPal mass pay, which you have to configure to your PayPal account, uh, but it makes it convenient to pay out your affiliates via PayPal. I'm gonna skip over settings really quick. Here's some admin functions that allows you to kind of clean up the tracking of clicks because every single click starts to get tracked with these tools to know who gets the commission. Uh, so here is where we can manage our payouts. So you see, you would just essentially go through these steps to generate a payout. Here's click tracking. So you're gonna see a list of all the, clink, the clicks. Here's uh, the commissions that you can set. And here's where you can see all of their add-ons. So I'm gonna jump into the settings for a minute, but we could take a look at this. And this is actually how I discovered that there is a cost to this solution. And there should be, you know, every plugin that is money related, uh, it's gonna have costs to support and develop and keep moving. So you definitely, it's a good thing that they have add-ons that are for sale. I wish they had a bundled price though that just kind of came with all of them. So let's go ahead and take the set a look at the settings. So first thing is your minimum payout. That's where I was saying uh, you can set that to a higher number and basically uh, that will l reduce the amount of people that purchase through their own link. And then here's another thing that we talked about, your cookie policy, and that was the duration. I gave you that example of 30 days. You can uh, change that to whatever you want. And for email name and email address, this is for the notifications. Affiliate management tools like this, they send out notifications, right? So when you receive an application, they notify the affiliate that registered. And when they're accepted, it also emails them an acceptance email. And as well as when payments are made, you there's all these various notifications that are done. Um, so uh, here's that option to automatically approve a new affiliate. Depending on your product, you might want to do manual approvals. I would suggest manually approving if it was me. And then here's where you can choose, is it a percentage of sale or a fixed amount? And for the percentage, you get to choose what that percentage is. And that's here with this $25. You can choose your currency. And here's that option here for you to enable your affiliates to receive a notification. Uh, that's good. I think for affiliate programs where the commission amount is high, it's nice to get those notifications. However, if it's small amounts, the commission, it, and they happen frequently, it could get a little annoying. Uh, so here's for the affiliate registration. So remember we talked through the workflow, your affiliate applies via an application. So here's where you can choose what you ask in that application form. So for payout methods, you definitely wanna just have that be PayPal right there. Uh, probably not gonna wanna have check. Uh, and then here is what the form is gonna ask. First name, last name, your typical information, the address and all of that and then the website URL. And if you wanted to ask something that's not listed here, one uh, one thing I can think of is to ask them how they plan on promoting your product or service. There's an option here to add custom fields. So you'd give your custom field a display name. So this is what's gonna show on the front end, a field name, and then you can choose the type of field that it's gonna be. Another interesting option in here is social security number if you are collecting this. However, I'm not an accountant and I'm not a tax attorney or a tax expert. However, if you do some Google searching, if you pay your affiliates via PayPal, 
PayPal takes care of any 1099 requirements that you, you would probably have. So that's a benefit to paying people out via PayPal. Uh, but you can't quote me on that, uh, but uh, you can uh, do a research on your own. So if you wanted to have that field that asks, how do you plan on promoting me? You would choose text and then right here for the max length, you could set that as well, okay? And here's where you choose what's required or not. You're definitely gonna want that website URL to be required. Okay, and then here's some of the messages that appear in the different parts of your affiliate management program when someone is logged in. And so right here is what they refer to as the affiliate homepage message where it's instructing them to log in or register. And then when we scroll down here, if someone is logged into your website, they're a customer, and then they try to access the affiliate area, but they're not an affiliate, this is the, mem the message that they're going to get. Okay, let's move through this. We've got messaging, so you get control over the emails that come and go. Uh, so you have these options right here, and you can edit the contents of these emails. So there's one when you approve, when you decline, when it's pending, uh, all these types of scenarios, you can go in there. But pretty much, you, well, like this, you know, you you might want to soften the blow. <laughs> I'm sorry your application was denied. Uh, you, you can decide how you want to word things. Uh, and you're definitely going to be declining people that, those coupon scammers and spammers. Okay, so right here is where you would enable PayPal mass pay. Now, I'll tell you, uh, we don't, I don't do that. I manually pay out affiliates. It's not like that tedious of a task. It'll take like maybe 10 minutes out of a month, 15 minutes out of a month. I pull a report. It says, how much do I pay each person? Since it involves money, I like to have my hands on it. So, so, uh, but you can enable uh, PayPal mass pay with this. You have to have a PayPal Premier or a PayPal business account and you just pop in your API information uh, right here and you can also do some testing. Okay, so here is where it links to those pages and that form. I showed you a second ago when I clicked on pages, the links, but here are those direct links right here. And we'll go ahead and take a look at it and you can see why I say it looks a little dated. As a matter of fact, let's look at the registration page and then you can see why I say it looks a little dated. So here's the registration page. Uh, obviously I don't have a logo on this site or anything like that. Uh, I would probably make this, try to make this look a little prettier, but this is kind of how it looks out of the box. It's kind of in this box and you have these fields. To me, it looks a little dated. Maybe it's just me and I'm overly critical about some of these things. Uh, so this is definitely where you're gonna wanna add a couple fields that are missing. The how do you plan on promoting us field and you also wanna ask someone's PayPal email address. If you're gonna pay for pay via PayPal, you wanna specifically ask them for that PayPal email address. All right, let's get back into the website here. So these are the links right here to the pages that it creates. Then we just have some advanced settings right here where you set a default landing page. You're not gonna mess with this setting right here, but this one is where they're hiding the, not hiding like it's on purpose, but the disable own referrals. Remember I said there's people that wanna earn a commission on their own referral, or if you check this box, it'll disable that from being an option. Now let's just jump back into add-ons really quick. There's a couple add-ons you would probably want that they just kind of come by default with Affiliate WP, but you'd have to pay for them with this solution, Affiliate Manager. And one of them's right here, Product Specific Commissions. You might want to have a different commission based on the product. And you also are gonna wanna have uh, different commissions based on the affiliate themselves. But here, uh, so you'd have to buy it. And if you click on View Details, it looks like it's just uh, 30 bucks, but you're probably gonna end up wanting that to have a different commission on a per product basis. And you're gonna want this one here, the coupon integration. This is where you can create affiliate coupons for your affiliates to give out. And when someone makes a purchase using that coupon, it's automatically attributed to them. That's $39, so you're already kinda up there, but you can get started with this solution if you wanted. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually remove it because I much more prefer affiliate WP. So what I'm 
going to do is I'm going to go and disable it and delete those pages and then we'll jump back in on the video. Okay, I've gone ahead and disabled and deleted that and I also removed the pages that it added. So let's go ahead and add in Affiliate WP and you're going to see it's a bit better. By the way, if you're going to buy Affiliate WP, I'll have a link in the video description box so you can visit wpcrafter.com slash affiliate WP. Let's go ahead and activate it. So right here it's saying there's no integrations enabled, so I'll go ahead and make it enable the WooCommerce integration. We'll do that together. And then we can put our license code in. So we see Affiliate WP adds it to the bottom down here. Let's go ahead and click on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on add-ons right here. Actually, I'm doing that the wrong way. We want to go to settings and then click on integration right here. And so here's a list of everything it integrates with very modular. So I can just check WooCommerce because I want the WooCommerce integration. But if you're adding it to any of these tools, this is how you do it. I'll click on Save Changes, and now you're going to see it's integrated with WooCommerce. So let's just go over some of the options here really quick. I'll show you what it looks like on the front end, and I'll show you what it looks like in WooCommerce products. So when I click on General, it's going to be a lot of the same stuff. We choose which page is our affiliate area. We choose a term of service page, everything that we just talked about. Uh, what's nice here is you get to actually choose what your affiliates link is going to look like. So it adds REF. So you can see it's the URL to the website slash question. And then there's that REF and you can make that REF be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to look that way. Equals and then the number is going to be the number of your affiliate, their affiliate ID. However, if you don't want it to look like that, you can change it to username. And what that means is your affiliate links are going to be REF and then it's going to show them their username on your site. Uh, so there's those two different options. And then by checking this box, your affiliate will see that they have those options. And then here's good. This is really good right here. You have that uh, click policy. So it's credit last refer. That's the first click last click concept that I was talking about earlier. So you have that option right here. Here's your kind of global referral rate, whether it's a percentage or a flat rate and what that exactly is. And since we're going to be doing WooCommerce, you can decide if you want it to exclude shipping and tax, you probably would definitely want to do that. Here's your cookie expiration right here. So this is where you can set it to 30 or 60 or whatever you want it to be. Then we have our currency and then here's the registration form. We can choose whether we want it to just be a registration form or a login form or both. So we're going to choose both. This is when you want to close your affiliate program and keep your existing affiliates, you would probably change this to login form only. Okay, so you can see the settings. There's just, it just I like it more. Uh, anyways, uh, we've got our integrations again. We have our opt-in form right here. This is quite interesting. You can pay an affiliate fee for signups to your email autoresponder. Uh, so right here, this is what they select. They support MailChimp Active Campaign and Convert Kit. You see that sometimes with some big product launches. Uh, okay, so right here you get these email options so your emails look nice. You can add your logo to it. Uh, there's a default template or if you just wanted to be plain text, you can choose the from name. Uh, the from email address right there and you have notification options. When do you want notifications to come through? And then you can control the text of those notifications. So what we do is we have these notifications go into a help desk and our affiliate manager, our shop manager will go into the help desk and look through those to know that an affiliate application came in and then go take a look at it. And you can choose what pits, uh, bits of information you actually want inside of that notification email right there. And then here is the notification if you wanted, if you wanted notification when your affiliate earned an affiliate commission, uh, this will notify you. And then here's an email that will notify them and you can customize uh, what, how that looks and what that says right there. Uh, here is when they get an, ex you accept their affiliate application. 
uh, you have the options right there. So you have full control, kind of granular, granular control over these emails and how they look. And then here's just some miscellaneous settings. So for example, right here is if you want to allow users on your site to register as an affiliate, here is if they require approval, I definitely suggest checkmarking that and manually approving your affiliates. Uh, depending on how big your operation is, you're definitely going to probably want that so you know who is allowed to promote your products or not. This is interesting if you wanted to auto register new users, this would be if you wanted to make your customers affiliates and immediately put them in there. Here's some CAPTCHA options if you wanted to add that to the form. Here are some debugging options and if you wanted to be in the beta version. And this is my favorite option, they're really good about this, this developer is if you are going to stop using this tool. Uh, there's a checkbox here that when you disable and delete affiliate WP, it'll take all of the information out of it. Under tools right here is going to be that option that I was talking about, this migration assistant right here. This is where you can pull in, you can pull in or convert or migrate over from affiliate, WP affiliate, that one I just talked about, affiliate manager, as well as affiliate pro. So you can stop using those systems and use their uh, switch to affiliate WP very painlessly. And we have some ability to import and export various bits of data that affiliate WP collects. Okay, we're gonna take a look at two things really quick. We're gonna go to pages and I wanna show you the pages that it created and we have it right here affiliate area so when I view it this is what it's going to look like it already looks better to me and it asks the more pertinent pieces of information so it's name username uh, anyways that doesn't matter but it's payment email that other system didn't even ask for the payment email website URL and of course the big question right here is how will you promote us so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out right now okay I've gone ahead and submitted it now I didn't have that setting that I probably should have had which is to require manual approval Approval. That's why it was immediately approved. So now when someone goes to the same URL, this is what they're going to see when your affiliate logs in. Here is your affiliates link. This is the link that they're going to use. However, they could generate a link to a different part of your website by typing it in here and it will generate that URL. Here's going to be their stats of clicks that have come through, the unpaid referrals, just all these stats that they want to look at. They They've got graphs, they've got referrals, here's the payouts that have made to, been made to them. Here's a list of all the visits on their affiliate link. If you added creatives, they would be here, uh, but I, well, I like to have a separate brand asset page. And then here is their settings so they can control a couple things. Number one, their payment email. They can go in here and change it. And then right here, they can enable new referral notifications. So if those email notifications get annoying to your affiliate, they can turn that off. So now when I'm back here and I go to overview, this is where you're gonna see some stats of what's going on. And here's the most valuable affiliate. <laughs> uh, here's the latest affiliate, it's all just me. Uh, but anyways, we go to affiliates and you can see here it is. It has my username. It has all that information, the rate. Now you can click in to a particular affiliate right here. See their ID, their referral uh, ID right there. Uh, when they registered, you can change their status. So if you want to make someone inactive, you could do that, leave them in pending. Website referral type right here. So it's going to be set to the site default, but on a an affiliate by affiliate basis you can override it and here is like my favorite part you can override the referral rate so you're producing affiliates that add and bring value uh, you can make them make it so they have a custom rate available to them okay account and payment email here is the what was filled out for the promotional method uh, so that I was just joking I said on a coupon site lol and then I can add some notes about this affiliate right here. That's pretty much all there is. Now there's that one last thing I wanted to show you when I go into WooCommerce, my products right here, I can set different commissions based on the product. So if I wanted to uh, get, so this is a sales funnel and I want to incentivize affiliates 
to drive traffic to the sales funnel. And I mostly will make my money on the membership, the course, and the mastermind. These are the upsells. I can offer an affiliate a 100% or maybe like a 95% commission on the front end product. So in here, it's this ebook. So this ebook's $49. Well, because I have enabled the WooCommerce integration, I can click on Affiliate WP. There's this new option here that wasn't there before. And I can adjust the affiliate rate on this product. So what I would probably want to do is make this like 90%. So essentially, if someone purchases this through an affiliate's link, uh, they're going to be guaranteed 90% of this. And of course, they'll make money on the upsells as well, maybe a normal 25%. But if I want to incentivize affiliates to drive traffic to my funnel, and I know that I make my money in my funnel on the upsells, I will give that front end offer the majority of that money to the affiliate. So I can go here, make that on the front end 90%. Uh, but then I know on these right here is where the real money is made. So on the membership, I can make this something unique as well if I wanted to. And that's pretty much all there is to adding a affiliate program to your website. You got a lot of strategy uh, in this video. And so I just want to remind you that it goes with this. It's ideal to watch this video, learn how to add sales funnels to your website, and then you can plug in this affiliate management program, Affiliate WP or Affiliate Manager. Uh, and remember, I'll link in the video description box these tutorials on drop shipping, print on demand, adding a course and a membership, and of course, this affiliate program, which will integrate with all three of those. So I've got you fully covered in your online online marketing business. And so that is it. That is how to add an affiliate management plugin or platform to your business and to your website. We learned so much in this video, things to do, things to not do, things to look out for. Uh, we covered it all, how to add this, the solution to your website. Uh, with WordPress, it's actually very easy because we, we don't have many options for adding affiliate management plugins, so a platform. So the good thing is like the one that we have, Affiliate WP, is pretty darn awesome. It gets the job done. So if you're interested in that, uh, visit wpcrafter.com slash affiliate WP. That my friends, is my referral link for Affiliate WP if they actually accept my application. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and click on that notification bell for notifications of new videos being sent to you. If you have any questions, you can ask in the comment section down below about being an affiliate or about having an affiliate program. I have both. I got a ton of experience in both and I'm more than happy to answer any question that you might throw at me. Other than that, thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.